I am so happy to see you guys. And Dr. Lehman and I are going to talk about a very important topic. And uh, I'll ask you if you like this video, please like it and share it because these topics that we're sharing are really, really important to help clear up the confusion um, about everything that's going on. I mean, the epidemiology, uh, you know, protein shows up because it's always eaten by quantity. We know it, but carbohydrates are never show up. And we know that we know that the primary nutrition link to cancer is calories. Yeah. And the primary calories in the American diet are carbs. Right. That's the real link. Right. So we should mention that, you know, this is kind of a, a continuation of yeah. the last video. And this is, you know, when you think about um, the data, you really have to look at the carbohydrate load. And it, it truly is carbohydrate load, but not just the carbohydrate load, it's the excess calories, really. Yeah. I mean, when you get into thinking about protein, I mean, all of these epidemiology studies are base, basically come out of one three-day food frequency survey. Right. And so if you stop and think about it, you go and ask somebody, how many eggs did you have on Sunday? They can tell you the exact number. If you ask somebody how many glasses of milk you had yesterday, they'll tell you. If you ask somebody how much meat, most people buy it by ounces you buy a quarter pounder or you buy six ounces of fish or something like that. But if somebody asks you how many carbohydrates were in those French fries or in that bag of Doritos, nobody has a clue. And basically we know that they're underestimating the carb calories by somewhere between 300 and 800 calories a day. So when people say the effect is protein, the reality is the effect of car is carbs. Right. And the, the flaw with epidemiological data is it's not used to prove a hypothesis, right? Sure. That's a randomized controlled trial. Yeah. It's um, to give you an idea, to ask a question. And in, some, and in nutrition in particular, there's just too many confounding errors. Right. I mean, there's, there's you know, body composition, there's exercise, smoking, drinking, how many vegetables did you eat? How many grams of fiber did you, all of those are confounding issues. And so you end up getting risk ratios that are between 1.1 and 1.3, which means there's something going on here, but we don't know which factor it is. And anybody who says that with a 1.2 risk ratio, you can say protein's the cause is an absolute liar. Right. And, and we should also mention that in order for a risk ratio or even relative risk to be considered clinically or not even clinically significant, just statistically significant, it, it should be over two. Yeah, every, every statistician I've ever talked to who actually works with that says until you get above 2.0, you're really just kind of saying, well, there's something going on, but we don't know what it is, and you certainly can't make any conclusions about it. And that's, you know, why you need, yeah. that's why you need RCTs and you need other kinds of things. And so when you get, when you get, epidemiology agreeing with the RCTs and then with good mechanistic studies and all three agree, then you can reach a conclusion. But right now what we have is weak epidemiology not agreeing with RCTs. So that's a pretty right. good hint that that's not true. Yeah. And so you guys, this is a really important point that the epidemiological data should match up to the randomized control trials because you, you use low quality evidence to prove to then make a study to create high quality evidence. So mm -hmm. those two should match up if you are on the right path. And we're not seeing the epidemiological data match up to the randomized control trials. To Don's point, the randomized control trials are all in support of protein. So hopefully you guys found this helpful to clearing up some of the constant questions that I'm getting asked and I'm sure Don is getting asked. So it's, it's really important, share this, um, share it with your friends, talk to them about it, especially when you see this kind of information being handed to you. Really question, take a look at the risk ratio, look to see how is the study design done? Is it epidemiology? If it's a rodent study, um, find out, like are these ad libitum fed rats? Um, in that case, you should take it all with a grain of salt. So share, like, comment, ask some questions and we'll be sure to get to them.